So we're just going to pray in for a moment, please. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we just thank you, God. We give you honor. We give you glory, God. Everybody that's in the sound of our voice, Father God, we just pray that you touch them, Father God, their body, their mind, their soul, in the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, Father God, people are hurting. People are going through, Father God. Fill them with your spirit, Father God. Deliver them, Father God. Heal them, Father God, by the presence and the power of God. Hallelujah to his name. Oh, Father God, I plead the blood of Jesus over every word, Father God, everybody that in this studio and everybody that's on the sound of my voice father god we need you in this hour like never before father god move god move god do what you want to do in jesus christ of nazareth's name let us say amen 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 hallelujah so the first thing i would like to um do is actually say the um scripture galatians 5 23 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, 23, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Praise God, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah to his name. So um, we're going to start our show with, actually I like to call it a ministry. Come on somebody, hallelujah. The, our subject for today is the spirit of fear, also with the spirit of deception. Um um, I would go ahead, Prophet Rice. I want you to start with your scriptures, please. Well, Ephesians uh, chapter six, starting with verse one, says, "Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment, with promise that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath." But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in the singleness of our hearts as unto Christ. I read for you Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for the good of our soul. Praise God, praise God. Well, I have a um, pressing um what actually came to this, the conclusion of God wanted me to do the spirit of fear, hate, dis and deception. Now, I want to talk about something that happened on Monday afternoon um, outside of a bagel shop in Oceanside, New York, close to where um, the victim, his name is Kashin Morris. He was ambushed by a group. Now, one of the things that I didn't understand is at least 50 teenagers actually watched it um, as he bled to death. They actually filmed it. And just to be honest with you, it really it really hurt my spirit because now we have to address why didn't anyone say anything? Why didn't anyone stop it? And I understand that he was affiliated with a gang, I think the um, the guy that actually did it, yes, the attacker. However, I'm not really talking about that right now. We're talking about a spirit to where if I see something, I say something. But more more than that, when we as Christians, or not even just Christians, as people, we are getting desynthesized to where we don't understand and value human life. Come on, somebody. And, and that's a church move. Come on, somebody. Where's the church in this hour to where our children, our families, our people, brothers and sisters, that we're not speaking what God says to do to where it impact not just a generation, but a nation. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. By the power of God. So I'm going to touch on a lot today. Um, Prophet Rice, can you go ahead and interject? What do you feel about this situation? Uh, and, and my heart goes out to the mother. We are praying. And, and that that's where it begins right there. We have to pray at home. People, you have to pray over your children. We got to pray over this community. We have to pray over the nation. We have to bring back prayer in such a way. You know, this morning we were talking about speaking in tongues. That's a powerful move. But also, you got to be able to pray over your, your children every morning. Your city. Come on, somebody. So, Prophet Rice, expound on that a little bit, please, sir. Well, first of all, I just want to say good morning to the listening audience. And to just expand on what you're saying, we're living in a time right now where the body of Christ must stand up and be the body of Christ. Right now, as a church, we have to be more of an influencer of the world than the world is an influencer of That's the right. church. That's right. That's right. And what that means is, we have to understand who our authority is. Our authority is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
He told us before he was to leave that we would be able to do greater works than he, than when he was on earth. And understand, we know what Jesus did. He cast out demons. He healed the sick. He got people saved. We're supposed to be doing the same thing. Unfortunately, one of the things that's happened is in certain churches, we're more concerned with money. We're more mm -hmm. concerned with having big numbers. We're more concerned with looking good. But the thing is, are you really fulfilling what God's purpose is? When it comes to these children who, who saw this, and even some of the ones who didn't do anything, what is going on at home as parents? And if you notice, we read the scripture at the beginning, honor thy mother and thy father so that your days will be numbered. There comes with that as parents in the church, in the body, including those elders, those deacons, those uh, just people who are in the church. We have children and young adults who you must mentor. That's right. And mentorship is just not we preaching to them. No, establishing a relationship so that you can get into a a conversation telling them right behavior, righteousness. Because the bottom line is God is going to hold us accountable. When judgment day comes, there are going to be times where God is going to say, why didn't you talk to John? Why didn't you talk to Paula? Why didn't you talk to uh, Tyrone or whoever when you had the opportunity to witness Christ to them and tell them what right behavior is? You, I notice you're talking about the uh, fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit is something that needs to be taught at home. And I'll be honest with you, to the fathers out there, I hope there are men listening out here. Your responsibility is to be the, to be the priest of your homes. That's right. You have to be able to uh, teach your children and your, uh, your spouse what thus saith the Lord. You have to do that. So that, therefore, that behavior goes outside your home. I really wonder in this situation that you're talking about, how many of those children who were filming, did their parents teach them that? Or mm, did they get caught good. in the sensationalism of social media? Because it's about being popular. It's about likes. And, I, oh, maybe, maybe I'll get all these likes so then I'll make some money off of YouTube because everybody's looking at my video. And, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. There, there's so many things that come to mind. But the one thing I'm always reminded of, God t told even those people, during the times of Jesus' time. These people who would go up and want to pr uh, pray and be seen, mm -hmm, he was mm -hmm. like, you, you know, they've gotten their reward. That's right. And some of, these, some of the things on social media, I'm not against social media. It is a tool. But the thing is, sometimes people use tools in unrighteous behavior. That's right. That's all I got to say about oh, that. Oh, that's good. That's good, Prophet Rice. Well, I want to talk about iniquity and lawlessness. Now, the Greek word for iniquity means lawlessness. That means acting without law or restraint. Mm -hmm. And I also want to read um, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7 says, For the mystery at iniquity are already worked. You see, folks, the spirit of lawlessness is rampant in our nation today. It is the very force behind the, les the legislation excuse me, that seeks to banish God from our society. The same spirit that Satan used to deceive Eve when he told her in so many words, God won't punish you for you disobeying. You can eat the fruit and you will have to pay for it. You see, the world is, is teaching people that God doesn't punish you for sin. Satan is using the same old lie on Christians today after they he convinces masses of believers that you can sin without paying penalty. It is a de demonic scheme of recent of the gospel of, gra of grace. They're actually attacking it because they don't want to live for God. So I'm going to just go, go ahead and sin. Now you talked about social media. Let me tell you about that, how I feel about that. First of all, um, we all have an um, responsibility. When that feed is going, and I don't care what nobody said because I was in television for a long time. When that feed goes, that feed should have been stopped right there. So they have a responsibility too. So now we got to start holding them accountable too. Wait a minute. Why are you letting this um, go like this when you understand what's happening? Because let me tell you something. The airwaves is quick. You know, we're talking about a millisecond. That's quick. So you already know what's going on here. So not only that you have a responsibility because now these kids want to go viral. Everybody want to go viral. Everybody want to be seen. It's called the spirit of attention attached to the spirit of fear. But now let's go talk about the spirit of fear again. The reason that you have a spirit of fear is because you don't have a snow God. The Bible says that there's a generation that don't know God. That's what's really happening here. It's because you mean to tell me that you value social media more than a life? 
How could you sit up there and watch him take his last breath? Now, here's what's going on. We're talking about the spirit of torment as well. The spirit of fear, let me tell you something. All spirits, they, they're not just one spirit. It's always a spirit. You see, spirit goes in groups. Only Christians try to be wonderful Christians, you know, super Christians. But they travel in packs. So we're talking about the spirit of attention, the spirit of fear, but also the spirit of hate. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So how can we devise a system to where we can bring back this world and not to be afraid but hold on the bible says that when you are ministers of god you are bold come on somebody the only way you can be bold is if you have a relationship oh, oh there it goes again a relationship with god it makes you the bible says be wise as serpents but gentle as doves come on somebody hallelujah so you know what god is saying you must stand up in this hour so that's what we're talking about being accountable but not only that having responsibility if you see something you say something Oh, you do something. Oh, come on, somebody. So tell me your take on this as far as the social media part about the responsibility and accountability, but not only there, also in the household. Because I, I we didn't grow up with social media. We didn't even have, well, I think we had the old dial phone. Dear, you know, it took like a year to go around. But now social media is actually raising our children. And actually, it, everybody wants to go viral. So what can we do to combat this? What do you think, Prophet Rice? Well... I, I think one of the things, the spirit of attention that you talked about, I think one of the things that, that has to happen even in our homes is we must we must take more time to pay attention to the children at home. For instance, when they're on their phones, when they're on the video games, what have you, sometimes we have to, t to kind of cut it off. I, I have a cousin in particular. Uh, his children are grown now, but one of the things he used to do during the week no video games that's right and no television mm -hmm. during the week during school week that's what he would do um we have to actually take the time and and i'm 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 feeling this about fathers because in a lot of situations we have fathers who yes they're working and, and I, I i i definitely can attest to that because i know i've had a week where i've had to work 46 hours in a week and that time is being taken away from the household but you have to take the time to get your children to the side and just talk to them. Even sometimes just spend some time with them and see how their day's going. Uh, I think that's what's missing with a lot of these kids because dads are not there to give that authority. Because here's the deal. If you have a man who's following Christ and his family is following him, then he'll be okay. Now, I know there are going to be certain children who will do things contrary to what mm -hmm. they're being taught. That's why we're supposed to teach our children so that when they get older, they will not depart from it. We have to spend more time with these kids. And I'm just going to say one more thing. I've heard even elder saints, and I'm not trying to pick on elderly people who are members of the body of Christ, but I remember a conversation I had with a young lady in church who had been at church 40 years, and she was going to a service that was more comfortable for her. And I said, well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone to one of the other services and kind of mentored some of these younger kids? And when I was talking about younger, I was talking about some of the 30-year-olds because there are some 30-year-olds who, in some cases, are babes in Christ, and that's men and women. I was like, have you ever taken the time to just kind of talk to them and mentor them? This lady looked at me, and she said, you know, I, I never really thought about it that way because... Sometimes we think that because we're an older generation that we can't talk and we can't teach other people who are younger than us mm -hmm. or they won't listen to us, but it's about relationship, like you said. We have to have a relationship within the church, and we also have to remember what Jesus told us. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. So the thing is, love, which is a fruit of the Spirit, we have to love one another. If there was love in that situation on when that boy was getting beaten, who would sit there and watch somebody get brutalized? Who would sit there? Who would not sympathize with that? Who would not step in and say, oh, no, this is not right? And the thing is, the interesting thing you said something about there was a gang member involved. Well, what about the gang of love? You mean tell me that's not stronger than anything that's happening in this world? Mm, that's good. That's good. Well, Prophet Rice, let me tell you something. You said a lot right now, and especially about the spiritual authority, also the humanly authority. Let me tell you something. We also have to hold everybody, adults, responsible. It's not just those children's fault. 
our generation and the generation before us, I really think dropped the ball. We stopped. We just X'd them out. As a matter of fact, pe people say it all the time. That's the X generation. No, I think we just got to take some extra time with them. You're going to have to, um, you're going to have to talk to them, but not, but not on your level. You're going to have to come down and meet them at their level. But at the same token with love, it goes back to responsibility, accountability. But let me tell you something. You can't do nothing without the power of the Holy Ghost. And so now it goes back to the responsibility of the churches. Oh, let's go here. Before there was church and state, there was just church. Are we talking about from 1940, even to 1960? Let me tell you something. The church actually ran the government, but now they came in and they separated everything, church and state. So let me ask you something though. When they did that, families were together when they did that the father was over the household you said something very powerful now you got two working parents so now who's raising our children come on we're talking about a system a world system that is ch raising our children so what are they doing the video games what are the video go games talking about wow. i remember grand auto theft i remember i was in la when it first came out and i remember looking at that billboard and my stomach actually turned i said god there it is he said you doggone right there it is let me tell you what ended up happening they were killing killing and killing so it's a spirit of kill 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 you understand what's happening so now we're talking about spirits again so everything come back to a spirit you know people say well everything's not a spirit yes it is yes it is it begins and ends with a spirit but here's how i want to talk about this what are we going to do to combat it because we already know we have a problem we have a problem with the spirit of hate of anger of rage as a matter of fact let's talk about road rage let's let's go back to the adults because here's the deal these kids are 16 18 so now we're talking about we're in our 50s right so what is going on in our generation that they picked up come on somebody hallelujah you don't hear what i'm saying they're seeing i'm looking at trump and i'm not gonna go there but most adults are on television cursing or on the radio cursing or on movies cursing i'm talking about they got kids cursing so we are actually putting that spirit out there so when it comes back in our backyard or even in the front porch then we got something to say so now it goes back to the church everything starts with the church and ends with the church i said all that i came back all around to say that it starts with the church and ends with the church i want to ask a question where are the churches in this hour? There is too much going on in the world. Are you telling me that the power of the devil is stronger than the power of God? Because I digress. I don't think so. So now we got to talk about the spirit of God. Why isn't it I'm talking about prevalent in our churches, in our lives, to where it affects the kids, to where they don't have to act out like this? Come on, somebody. You know, it's really interesting as I was listening to you. Um, fear is also affecting our churches because... People seem to think to get think they're going to be shunned if they speak with thus saith the Lord. And I, you don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be an apostle. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be an evangelist. You can, you don't have well to be honest with you. We all can be teachers right. of the Word of God. So there's nothing wrong with saying it is written, because remember when Jesus was attacked by Satan, he said it is written. And there's nothing wrong with if we're t mentoring somebody. I, I teach for a living, so. There are times all the time, I get on students all the time about saying negative things to themselves in terms of, well, math is not my subject. I said, well, number one, maybe you need to change your attitude and not say math is not my subject, but I'm going to master this subject. Uh, we, have, we have to get our churches to understand the authority that we have in Jesus Christ, where he says in Luke 10, 19, I trample on snakes and scorpions and the power of the enemy shall not harm me. Which basically says the following. Christ gives us the authority over the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. you, you, you understand where I'm coming mm -hmm. from? So we have to step up and say, God, your, let thy will be done, not my will be done. Because if we're doing it God's way, then we can stomp out some of these little atrocities. That was wrath and strife that happened in an attack on that young man. Mm -hmm. That was wrath. Because what in the world should happen that a, somebody would want to kill a 16-year-old boy? I don't even know what happened. But at 16, what in the world could a 16-year-old do to you that you would be that violent that you want to take somebody's life in front of people? That's right. Because that was a spirit of attention, too. Oh, look what I do. I'm, now I'm, I'm the big man. So now y'all be fearful of me. No, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And if we stand on the word of God, there should have been no fear. Somebody should have stepped up on that boy's behalf. That, 
That's what I'm talking about. Somebody, okay, first of all, they say it was in front of a bagel shop where they have an owner. Also in front of a strip mall. Right. Why are people so afraid to even stand up? We're not just talking about in this incident. We're talking about in, it's, it's a national problem. Absolutely. People are afraid. And again, I talked about something. I just went live like maybe 30 minutes ago. And I'm going to bring something up. And again, it's not to glorify us because we are we are servants of God. But there was a situation that happened in the 80s, Prophet Rice. Um, I was driving to the apartment complex and I saw a gang of guys and I, I disobeyed God because he said call the cops but I'm thinking okay it's nothing five minutes later it was a whole war and I remember God saying find Adam so I didn't even know who Adam was so I got out the car and I'm running and I finally found him when I found Adam they had already split his head open the white meat was hanging out mm -hmm. and not only that the guys had a um, gun and I said with the power of God I said don't touch him no more in the name of Jesus Christ I said back up and them boys backed up and they left. And I remember holding his head together and, and I said, you're not going to die on me, young man. I say, I, I believe in the power of God. I said, God, God sent me here. And he didn't understand what I was saying because he's out of it. And I tell you one thing, God showed up. Now, let me tell you how powerful this is because if you, I'm going to tell you the whole story. I had a spiritual um, mentor. His name was Michael Lambert. I was actually with him going to his house. All right. Uh, actually, I think I was spending the weekend there. Make long story short, God had told Michael to come and, and find the other guy. I forgot the other guy's name. So when we get back home and everybody's running in their apartments, we're running and trying to find out the two young gentlemen that God said. So when we got together, when I finally um, came home, we both had blood on us and we just looked at each other and started crying because I'm coming in the complex. I didn't know God had told me to find Adam and I didn't know what God had told him to do. So we looked at each other and we told each other what God I said and it was like we both started crying and that was the power of God not trying to make ourselves heroes and glorified it was the power of God that told me Deanna get out that car don't be scared and go find him and come on somebody hallelujah so when I think about a month later because they were both they were seriously injured so it took about a month their parents came and we all sat down and they said, thank you. I said, no, thank God. I said, because y'all had to be men and women of God for God to allow us to intervene. So understand this whole thing, what I'm talking about. Prayer, it starts with at home. Pray over your children. Lay hands on your children. Speak to your children. If you see them doing something wrong, because let me tell you something, all that stuff that happened on Monday, that could have been avoided if parents do their job. But now hold on, we're going to open up another can of worms. You got pen, you got children killing their parents. This is just like last days. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So now we have a spirit of disobedience in our children of disobedience. Come on, somebody. We got to find a, pro a solution. We know the problem. That's a problem. I'm talking about people are scared, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So why are you so scared to where you will let another person die because of your fear? Because let me tell you something, and I'm telling you how God looks at it. Everybody must give a count on that day that saw and didn't do anything. We are held accountable. Let me tell you something. Not even just coming to God. God has allowed us to live every day that you live. You are accountable for what you do and what you don't do. You are accountable for what you say and what you don't say. Point blank in the story. My Bible says so. So what Bible is everybody reading? So now we have grown-ups accountable and children, but it starts at home. And what am I saying? Most people are not serving God. So when you have children that's not serving God, now we got a problem like we did on Monday. So it goes back to not serving God. You know, one of the things, and I don't mind saying it, I, I, I was a hellion, you know, at 27 years old, what I didn't do. But one of the things when God saved me, he said, you got a daughter, Deanna. And I wanted to be better just for her, to show her the right things, to teach her the right things. So it's not even about just the children. Parents, do you love your children enough to teach them the right things so they're not a victim or an attacker? What do you think about that, Prophet Rice? Well, one thing is for sure, when it says honor thy father and thy mother, the parents have to know what God requires so that they can teach them something so they honor them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have these children who don't honor their parents because they the parent the children know when the parents aren't right. Mm. So the thing is, we have to. It's a response. It's a reciprocal relationship. If you want your children to honor you, you got to honor God. That's right. If you don't honor God, then it's 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 like a trickle down. Uh, uh, it's like a remnant. You almost uh, you're almost setting your children up for something un unfortunate if you're not careful. Now God's gonna take care of His people. Because even in unrighteousness, if God's in it, 
He's going to give them whatever they need. But it's your responsibility as a parent, especially the fathers, to, to make sure that they look out for their kids. And, and, you know, you said something right there. Um, that is powerful, Prophet Rice, because here's the deal. It's not just about, it's the spirit of Cain and Abel. Come on, somebody. It, it's just from the beginning to the end. If you look at life, it's just going right back around in a circle. Why was Cain upset at Abel? Just because God asked them for both the same thing. Cain gave what he wanted, and Abel gave God what he wanted. So it comes back to the church. It comes back to us. Are we being obedient to God in every? Because I'm going to be honest with you. America has left God. We're looking at Babylonian activities now. Mm. This is just like the stuff that we read in the Bible. Brother killing brother, sister killing sister. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So it goes back to the church. Are we doing our job? We have more churches, more money, more worship experiences, more services, more resources. Why aren't we affecting our communities, our nation? Because let me tell you something. We can't do it without God. You can't do it. The system keeps trying to fix a broke system. You can't do it without God. Come on, somebody. And I will say one more thing, and I know there are many pastors who are doing great jobs, but I just want to challenge the pastors. Please don't be scared to speak sermons of conviction and correction for your congregations. Because sometimes people go to church and they just want to hear a good time message. Sometimes they need to have a conviction message that will make people want to change and repent. Mm. Because Jesus said, that when his ministry started, he said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. It needs to be that serious right now. Because the thing is, I would hate to see a whole bunch of churches on rapture trying to figure out why they weren't picked. Wow. But, but you know what? We, we focus on the victim. But what about the attacker? He's an 18-year-old young boy as well. Because, we, we, see, that's, that's what's wrong with society. we got to look at everybody's involved. That's two lives. Because here's the deal. If you don't know how the prison system works, and I know I've kind of told you a little bit about the prison system, he's 18 years old. Do you understand what's, what could happen in prison? So now you got two lives, possibly. Come on, somebody, go on because of a one situation. But now, not only that, we talking about the problems. What are the solutions? Now what are we going to do? Because this is broke. This is system broke. So now what are we going to do as churches? Because I think we need mentorship, just like you said. But also, we need voices. Where's the church voice in this hour? Hold on. I don't want to just hear good preaching. I don't want to hear just good teaching. I want to know how to change. Because now you're talking about the parents, right? What if the parents don't know how to change? Because here's the deal. People work hard. You know it. 46, 50 um, hours a week. This is what they do. They get cigarettes, alcohol, drugs. I need something to help me. Exactly. I'm already in pain. How am I going to help my, uh, my children if I'm in pain? So you understand. So now we're talking about personal problems that actually trickle to the kids, just like you said, because it's, everything's a spirit. So if you see, if you have a man that's an abuser, you think his son is going to be an abuser? Nine out of ten, it will. You understand? So you being in the educational system, what do you see just on your level of education? There's so many levels to that, but what I will say is this. I think a lot of people are bothered by some of the same things that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. If it bothers you that much, Take the time to ask God, God, what to use me? What can I do? What can I pray? Lord, how can I intercede? I hear a lot of people who say, well, the church is not doing this, the church is not doing that. Well, one of the things that I've always said to people, if it bothers you that much, ask God to show you how you do your part. Mm. Because remember, it's a body of Christ. That's right. And the body of Christ is everybody who has accepted Christ. It's not a church building. That's right. All of us are the church. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, we have to do our part. I forget what, it, what, what scripture it is. I want to say it's 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. It talks about the, uh, uh, the, the, the many, the many gifts, uh, uh, yeah. spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody has a gift. Use your gift for the glorification of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And ask God to show you where, send me, Lord, where you want me to, to go. We just heard a story earlier a few minutes ago from uh, uh, our, our, our host here this morning, where he God used him to be able to help deliver a man from his pain That's and right. allow him to be able to be comforted in a time of, of, uh, of, of adversity. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can be the same people. It, it doesn't matter that you may not think you have anything to say. Allow God to use you. 
but how do we combat the spirit of fear? The only way you can an answer that is with faith. So when you don't have it, God, increase my faith. God, let me not be afraid. You know what I do? And this is just something personal, but I teach uh, prophetic classes, and this is what I do. I actually anoint myself, and I pray over myself, and I say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, help me. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do it, God, but if you just teach me, God, if you just, just tell me what to do, send me, God, I'll go. And, and you have to ask God, and, and I do this on a personal level. God, keep me mentally strong, physically strong, spiritually strong, Father God. You lead me. But guess what? It goes and starts with obedience. You got to do what God says to do. When you know, it, it's funny how this radio state, this radio um, ministry came about. Um, I, I know people don't know, but I'm going to tell you. Some of you do. I was asking God. I said, God, I want to do a blog. He, or he already had in my spirit because I've always been in television and I've always wanted to be on the radio. I said, God, I want to do a radio blog. He said, Okay. And it was so funny. The next week. I'm on radio, like real radio. And I'm like, right. oh, you're funny. He said, no, I'm not. He said, just stay stay faithful to the cause. Y'all don't hear what I just said. Mm -hmm. When God gives you an assignment, you got to stay faithful. Because let me tell you what the assignment going to leave. Oh, come on, somebody. Assignment leaves. But when you are faithful, that's what makes you, you know what? I, I, God, what do you want me to talk about? What do you want me to preach about? What do you want me to teach? Come on, somebody. And you cannot do that without the spirit of God. So what am I saying? People are hurting Prophet Rice in every area and every color. So please don't make this about color. I'm so sick of that one because guess what? In heaven, there are not going to be no sections. Black, white, Indian. We're all going to be just one happy family. Come on, somebody. So now we got to figure it out, family. Because just like you said, the fivefold. But I'm going to tell you something. Church is afraid of the fivefold. Food. They they afraid of the apostles and the prophets. They don't mind the preachers and the teachers, but guess what? Some of them got power too, people. Apostles, it's time for us to have the fivefold ministry because all gifts work together. And notice it's fivefold. You know what? If you ball that together, that's a fist against Satan. So what's happening is that we're too much divided. And so now our children are divided. We have to come together on common ground, but not only that, with a common cause. Our love must be greater than hate, Prophet Rice. That's what I'm really saying this morning. We got to teach these kids how to love again. I know sometimes it gets hard. I know that sometimes you work in a job you don't want to work. I'm I, Sometimes you're married to somebody you want to be married to. You see, it's time for people to tell the truth. But I can't tell the truth if I'm scared the pastor going to preach it. I can't tell the truth if I don't know how to get healed. I can't tell the truth if I don't know how to be real with myself. And this all start with the spirit of truth. So what are we talking about? Spirits. Everything is a spirit. If you don't know how to do it, just get on your knees or even just where you're at. Father God, I just need you. Teach me how to be a better parent. Teach my child. You should not. Let me tell you something. We don't throw away people. And that's what's happening. These kids are getting thrown away. You know, and I don't mind selling my personal testimony. When I was um, young, I got molested and all kind of stuff. And at 16, what I wasn't doing. But I, I never forget one thing. My mother never threw me away. I, everybody else could talk about me and say whatever. But I tell you one thing. Your mother never threw me away. You know what she did? She prayed. And I'm going to tell you something else she did. Um, she's the one that prophesied all this. I remember mom called me before she died and told me she was dying. I, and I ain't going to lie. I hung up the phone. I said, I said, Mama, stop playing. And she, she run the phone back and she said, Deanna, let me tell you something. She said, you say you're a woman, so I need you to listen. She said, you did a whole lot of bad stuff. She said, yes, you did. She said, but God going to use you. And don't you don't you dare let go of God. She said, now, it's going to be a process. I'm saying something, people. It's going to be a process, and you're not going to understand it. But stay with God. You know what I noticed in church and just in life? We leave the process. It hurts or it feels uncomfortable or we don't like change or, or they're talking about me or they're laughing at me. We have to learn to start loving each other to where love conquers hate. You can't do it by throwing them away. You can't do them by incarcerating them. We can do it by the power of God. Last words, Prophet Rice. Well, only thing I want to say to everyone is if you don't know what to do, the word of God is always there for you. Please study to show yourself approved and ask God to show you what his will is in your life. In Jesus' name I pray. And I, and, and I thank you for this opportunity, Apostle, and I thank this radio station for this opportunity to just be able to address everyone. Can, can you pray us out um, as a, a man, the spiritual authority of a family? Because I think that's what we need right now, Prophet Rice, more than anything. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be able to address your communities, oh God. Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that you would touch the fathers, 
in this society. But most of all, not just the fathers, but the men, whether they be brothers, sisters, uncles, or what have you, Lord. Allow them to be able to seek you. Lord, seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, Lord. Help them to be able to teach their children. Help them to be able to teach their spouses. Help them to be men who will who will be able to lead these communities in the way that you would have them to go, oh God. God, I ask that you would help them to want to know more about you, oh Lord, and to glorify you in their, li in their living and their daily lives. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. I thank you, oh Lord, for this opportunity. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Um, you know, um, I just, I, I couldn't help tears flow because I know what it's like to be a lost child and if you're out there and you're a teenager, don't give up on you. Just don't give up on you. In Jesus Christ's name, this is Deanna Dixon with War Time. God bless everybody.